Welcome to another episode of Talking College Football with JJ Kitchen. Of course, I'm your host, JJ Kitchen. Guys, before we get into the hot topic today, some interesting news came up about Stanford and Cal, even SMU still in the running. But before we get into it, guys, subscribe to the channel right down below here. Like the video, comment, share with your friends. The conversation we've been having on a number of videos in terms of conference realignment has been incredible. And the content in the channel continues to grow because of you guys and the information that we give out on a day-to-day -day basis. And as we get closer to the season, you think things would wind down a little bit. But in the case of the ACC, things are starting to heat up. Well, guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking about ACC conference realignment. Obviously, the ACC, my home conference with, with obviously the University of Pittsburgh. A lot of talk within the last five to six days between SMU, Cal, Stanford. Where are these schools at? Where could they potentially go? It's crazy. Four days ago, uh, if you guys haven't been caught up yet, four days ago, really, Cal, Stanford, and SMU were really in the running to go into uh, the ACC. Outlandish things. One thing that we have confirmed is that uh, a school such as SMU, obviously the alum of George W. Bush, a guy that's actually in the crazy thing, the political aspect of this has been coming crazy, to say the least, sticking up for SMU, his alma mater, talking about why they should be allowed into a Power 5 or technically now Power 4 conference since the Pac-12 found its death. Uh, unfortunately, didn't make it, um, but why SMU should be in there. But also, too, Stanford and Cal, two institutions, great institutions on the West Coast in terms of academics. Um, but when football-wise, maybe not as great, but we'll talk a little bit about why Stanford may be the best athletic department in the country because of its non-revenue sports. But when you look at SMU, guys, things that I've heard recently, more than likely as we stand here today, I don't see any way that uh, that's, uh, that SMU gets into it. And it's crazy. Some of the things that we heard this week is that SMU would be willing to forego distributions for the next five-plus years. Donors are willing to donate over, over five, $500 million over the next seven to eight years, which when you think about it, you know, the media rights, distributions, these things are so big and vital to an, an athletic department and what it really means. And really, that's why we are where we are in terms of conference realignment. To have SMU, who really has deep pockets uh, and a great market in terms of Dallas, growing market, I think there'd be a lot of potential there. But when you look at what the, the ACC in terms of what they're looking for, um, in terms of potential value, what that could potentially bring, SMU just doesn't fit the bill. Uh, when you look at the different models, if you add all three of these teams, you're really after travel costs, everything that's involved, the pro rata that goes involved. If everybody did an equal distribution, it would be roughly two and a half to three million dollars each extra to each one of these schools in the ACC. And that's just really not going to cut it in terms of SMU taking a personally, which I think is an, an, a wild offer to, to say the least, um, to take no distributions. Me personally, I would certainly look at SMU. If they're looking to bring the ACC network into the Dallas market and get more eyeballs, that is certainly a school that I would definitely take a look at. But from everything that I've heard from the ACC and inside those doors, they're really kind of out of the running at this point. Um, and SMU is kind of in the, the struggle point of where can they get ever get into a Power 5 conference ever again? It seems as if that question will continue to ride on. Um, but when you look at Stanford and Cal, they were actually, believe it or not, ACC had individual discussions, an internal vote, nothing that was uh, out in the public, but they did meet. They did talk about it. Notre Dame is a big, big advocate for Stanford and Cal. One, because of the major, the great institutions that they are in terms of academic research, research money. Those things are really important to the people that make the decisions about conference realignment. And that's the president's of these universities who really go into long depth about who they really want to add into the conferences. Me personally, I think, you know, when you look at these two, these two institutions, Stanford and Cal, obviously nothing from the barn burner in terms of what football looks like uh, and recent memory serves us correctly here. Two institutions that just aren't doing well. Um, obviously Stanford, really had a, a wealth of, of success when, when Jim Harbaugh was there. You had even when David Shaw was there in, in the early portion that he was there. At least there is history there. Um, in, in terms of the ACC, they've talked about maybe getting maybe half a distribution, only 50%, to potentially almost nothing for the first five years just to get into the ACC because they don't want to be in the, the, the uh, American Conference or the Mountain West. I think these two institutions where – 
guys, it just gets down to me. And it's almost crazy to me to think about why the Pac-12 is in where it's in. One of the reasons why the Pac-12 fell apart is because of the elitist and really the, the just the egos are involved with these institutions. And Stalin, uh, Cal and Stanford really have basically said to this point that they do not want to be a part of the Mountain West for reasons that if you look at it for right now, it's crazy. that They just don't want to be a part of it because they're not to that level of that institution. You look at the ACC, the amount of uh, schools that are AAU, the AAU status is huge. Stanford and Cal obviously have those. But when you look at these in terms of conferences, really the Big Ten and the ACC are really the two conferences that really fit what Stanford and Cal bring to the table in terms of academics. I just don't see, see the Big Ten adding anybody else. I think that they're really set at this point. If they go to add anybody else, they have to bring value. But more importantly, Fox, NBC, and CBS have basically said the money's not there. So they're not going to be looking to add anybody else anytime soon, even with everything going on with Florida State. Florida State won't get an invite from uh, from the SEC because of obviously Florida in there and the rivalries there. And FSU would not bring pro rata to the SEC because they're already in that market. So Florida State's really jammed themselves into a corner to see what they could potentially do. Uh, I think down the road, maybe the Big Ten would be able to open up. But the question that really shows itself into this moment is that Florida State's not AAU. Go look at every institution in the Big Ten. The only one that's not AAU status is Nebraska. But when Nebraska was admitted, they were at the time. They just lost it. In terms of the ACC, I think that the way this is going right now, I would say about roughly two days ago, three days ago, I would say about a 30% chance, 20% chance that Stanford and Cal would join the ACC. But the fact that now Condoleezza Rice, uh, a major political figure, uh, someone that's brought a, a lot of a lot of power in, in terms of this, with the political power, what they're looking at, uh, a lot of relationships into this. From everything that we've seen so far, guys, I would not be shocked from everything I've heard. I, my prediction has really gone from 30% to about 70%. There's going to be a vote tomorrow uh, behind closed doors with the ACC again. Everything that I've heard is that everything's trending in that direction. Uh, one of the main causes of it going in that direction is the fact that this these two institutions have been really pushing. And I think it's going to be a very friendly deal towards the ACC. I think it's going to allow them to add more revenue because of uh, these two institutions not getting full distributions. Uh, that's going to be a major, major factor into allowing these two schools in there. I think when you look at the four teams that are holding out right now, the, the, the top two teams, obviously Florida State and Clemson, not looking to add because they think potentially these two schools do not add any value in terms of the, the media distributions. But also, I think the two swing schools are going to be UNC and North Carolina State. Those two really are on uh, with both, obviously, in North Carolina and the same institutions in terms of how they're ran. Um, those are really the swing votes, in, in my opinion. You know, they only, you know, the ACC only needs one of those schools uh, to switch its votes. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what that looks like. Um, but I think personally, as we stand right now, we're kind of trending in a direction that these two schools are more than likely going to get in um, because obviously Notre Dame continuing to push. Um, the one thing I do agree about what FSU was saying, you know, FSU will change their vote if Notre Dame joins the conference. Again, trying to get that power struggle. What could this potentially look like? Me personally, I don't think Notre Dame ever joins a conference unless they're forced to. The college football playoff, if, if the college football playoff says, look, Notre Dame, you have to join a conference if you want to join the playoff. In my opinion, that's the only way that they get in. Uh, that's the only way that they join the conference at this point. I think that Stal uh, Stal Stanford and Cal both get into the ACC because one of the two or both UNC and NC State change their mind and change their vote because of everything that happens behind closed doors. And in the fact that everything, the political power, the, the, the meetings behind closed doors. But I think the third really deciding factor is, is that these schools really bring in the pro rata, but they don't take full distributions. And then they give the money to certain schools or they divide it up between all the schools in the ACC. That's the only way I see them getting in. And from everything I've heard, it sounds like that's what's going to have to be. And Stanford understands that because if Stanford doesn't get into the ACC or the Big Ten for that instance, more than likely, I think Stanford would be able to go independent because of the brand that they have, but also to the endowment. They have a lot of money and cash on hand between the endowment. Um, this would be something I could definitely see Stanford moving forward to if they do not get into the ACC. But from everything I've heard at this point, these two institutions, Cal and Stanford, it looks like they potentially are going to go into the ACC because of the distributions 
lack thereof that they would take, but also to ESPN deciding to put the ACC network on the West Coast, grabbing that time zone out there, allowing more uh, more uh, viewership. And I think what ESPN is looking at in this term is really trying to get these schools to understand when you put that out to the ACC network on the West Coast where you don't have anybody out there at this time, you get more viewerships. And what happens is, is obviously then you get more distributions. In the past three years, the distributions, especially this, this pasture that we saw, which was roughly about $44 million uh, that Pitt got after the 2021-2022 school year, um, was because of more viewership. They're ahead of schedule. Each one of these years, the distribution has been higher than what's been projected from previous years because of how well the ACC has done in terms of viewership. I think that this school's if you add them from out there, they get no distributions or they get very little distributions for the first five years. I think the potential of the, the return of investment with the viewership on the West Coast would be a lot. And I think the ESPN sees that and they want to add in that time zone, especially to the ACC network. And the way the ACC is in terms of obviously ESPN being a 50-50 partner in the ACC network, which is huge, equity partners. ESPN can't have them fail. They got to try something. And in terms of this, if the Stanford and Cal do not take less than 50% distribution, I say it's off. But if they take 50% or less, Stanford and Cal are going to get in. And we're about to find out tomorrow from an internal vote, potentially how it goes. But then it, then it goes to a public forum where they have that vote. And from everything I'm hearing, it sounds like one of the two schools or if both schools, UNC and NC State, will change their mind. And these schools will get in. Um, it'll, that'll make, you know, Notre Dame happy. That'll make the other schools in terms of obviously outside of, you know, uh, uh, Florida state and Clemson happy. And I think potentially in the long run, they're projecting out what these distributions could look like, especially too, if from what we've heard recently, the ESPN could potentially sell to Apple because right now Apple is putting together an offer that could potentially be a groundbreaking deal where Apple takes over ESPN as Disney. The way that the way business is going right now, Disney's not doing a good job with ESPN. Disney giving them the opportunity to dump off ESPN to Apple. Apple would be an absolute superpower, and I think if you can tell, Apple more than likely would want St Cal and Stanford in there because of the West Coast, more viewership, more money, and I think potentially in the end of the run, with no with half the distribution or less, it's going to add more money in. It's just the way it looks at this point. And I think it's it's the best bet that what the ACC can do. Um, it'll be a, it'll be a tough bet, obviously, for Stanford and Cal as they have to travel as much as they do. But we'll see as, as how this goes in terms of where does the ACC go after that? Did they, did they try to potentially poach if they add more value? That's going to be the next question is the dominoes fall. What does what is currently happened to ESPN? And does this really escalate in terms of, OK, Sta uh, Cal and Stanford coming in to the ACC and then what happens with ESPN. So it'll be fun to see what happens with Cal and Stanford, how this goes. Me personally, I have both institutions coming into the ACC because of what has happened and transpired in the past couple of days, but we shall see. Again, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. This has been an incredible time with, a, with all of you guys. The comments, from, especially from the previous videos on, on conference realignment, I'd like to hear your, hear your thoughts. Share this video with your friends. Let me know what did I get right, what did I get wrong, what do you guys think. Let's have that conversation down in the comments section. And, of course, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Let me know what you think. Let's get it going down in the comments section with your thoughts. Again, guys, as always, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And of course, as always, hail to Pitt. And I'll see all you ACC fans down the road. Until our next video, enjoy yourself, guys. See you soon.